In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can search on Google search for the Orthodox prayers of monastic tonsor. Orthodox prayers of monastic tonsor. It's also known as the uh, schema prayers or the Orthodox schema prayers. Megalo schema, great schema for uh, taking your permanent vows into the Orthodox Church as, uh, as a monk. Um, so learning uh, those prayers or studying those prayers uh, has to do with the monk or the person that's a candidate to become a monk. He is tonsured, his hair is cut in the shape uh, of a cross and before that happens the scissors are placed on the Holy Gospel book and given to the candidate so the candidate receives the gospel book with the scissors laying on the top he gives it back to the spiritual father the abbot of the monastery or the bishop and then the bishop gives him back or the abbot of the monastery gives it back and then he does it again, and then he does it one more time, three times. And then his, the candidate's hair is then cut uh, three times in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And there are questions that are asked first to the candidate. Will you remain in the monastic life and be obedient to the church? and her teachings and remain in the monastery to your last breath. And you say, with the help of God, most reverend father. And suffering things in the monastery after your after your tonsured, after you, you, you if you read those prayers, Google search um, schema, Orthodox schema monk tonsor or Orthodox tonsor into the monastic life or schema, Orthodox tonsor. And look at all the prayers from what's being asked by the spiritual father, the monk, the abbot, or the bishop. Um, and what the candidate is responding to in professing his vows of chastity, poverty, stability and obedience once you take your permanent vows and as a stav reform monk that means that those vows are permanent when you were barely a novice or a rasa reform monk you were clothed with part of the the orthodox monastic um, clothing usually a cassock um, and you could have left at any time the monastic life and continued as a lay person in the Orthodox Church, which is perfectly fine. But when you take vows of permanent vows as a Stavrofor monk, Stavrofor means cross bear. So you're given what's called a paramon, a cross you wear um, on your back with, with a cross with a, a ladder reaching up to it, and the rooster crowing and the nails and the hammer and, and says, uh, let no man trouble me for in my body I bear the wounds of the Messiah, which are the words of St. Paul the Apostle. Um, and there's these questions that are asked and the candidate answers those questions. And after the hair is cut in the shape of a cross and the, the candidate is tonsured, um, into the Stavrofor and become a, a permanent vowed Orthodox monk. That is for the rest of his life. That he will keep all those monastic vows that he made before God, the saints, and the angels. And I'd like you to Google search Orthodox monastic schema tonsor so that you can see what those prayers are. And those 
are the promises that I made many years ago and I'm 50 already, 51 years old and I tell you that in my monastic life through these years, uh, of course there's monks, um, been monks for over 40 years, much older than me. Um, and they're up in their 70s, 80s. And to know they've been monks for over 40, 50 years of their life. So, in the Orthodox Church, you have Russian uh, Orthodox monastic life. You have the Greek Orthodox monastic life. And even though they're both same Orthodox and same monastic life, some of their ways of doing things may, may differ, but it's still the Orthodox Church. There's uh, Russian Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox, Romanian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Antiochian Orthodox, and most people in Romanian, Russian, um, Serbian, Greek, become uh, monks in those uh, Orthodox churches. And I want you to really study word per word what does an Eastern Orthodox Christian candidate or person confess and vow to when he becomes a monk or she becomes a nun, which are also called monks as well. Nuns can also be called monks or monastics, but they're, they are nuns. And we're given a cell rule. We have obediences. We're given a cell rule, which may consist of doing a set number of prostrations every day. Um, that is when we make the sign of the cross and we go all the way down to our knees and put our face on the ground and then we stand completely up again, saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. And then go all the way down to our knees again, put our face to the ground, our head, and then get back up and stand up again and making the sign of the cross. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And up again, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then up again, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's a very common thing for Orthodox monks to do prostrations every day, every night. Um, two, three hundred, a thousand or more. Many, 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 many prostrations. Someone once asked one of the spiritual fathers on Mount Athos in Greece, which has been an Orthodox Christian um, Byzantine they still on the Byzantine time there. And for over 1,000 years of Orthodox monastic life on Mount Athos in Greece. You can YouTube that. They got a lot of videos as well. Um, 60 Minutes, the news 60 Minutes, did a one-hour um, video on monks of Mount Athos. Check that out. 60 Minutes. Holy Mount Athos, A-T-H-O-S. Um, there's also a, a, a video about Orthodox monks, it's an older video, and it's called A Thousand Years is Like One Day, and one day is like a thousand years. All you gotta do is go to YouTube and type in Orthodox Monks of Mount Athos. A thousand years is like one day, and one day like a thousand years. And watch that video, it's like an hour long. It talks about the peninsula in Greece, uh, where Mount Athos is, how old it is, how it started, what has happened throughout the years, and um, the daily life uh, of an Orthodox monk. Um, there are many things uh, as monks that we are witnessing to when it comes to being a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would say that the first thing 
that any Orthodox monk or nun is a witness to is Christian martyrdom. When you put on, as a monk or a monastic, this black cassock, when you've been given this, when you've been tonsured a monk in the Orthodox Church, and, you, and they put this black cassock on you, cassock, that's what it's called, you are witnessing to the whole world that you are a Christian martyr. Because the monk, by becoming a monk, it is the highest calling in the Orthodox Church. Not all Orthodox priests are monks. Even though they're ordained priests, doesn't mean that they're tonsured monks. So to become an Orthodox monk, the first your first witness to the world of the Lord Jesus is that you are a martyr. You can look into this. Google search this. Check this out. Are Orthodox monks martyrs? Because Orthodox monastic life is a voluntary martyrdom to, to give up everything to follow Jesus. Check it out. Google search it. Study it. A Christian martyr it is when you once you join the ranks of orthodox monks you have joined the ranks of the christian martyrs if you die an orthodox monk a professed tonsured orthodox monk then you die a christian martyr for jesus christ in the orthodox church we say all christian martyrs go straight to heaven Although some have disagreed with that, but it's always been the rule. We stand in prayer as monks for hours, usually at sunset to sunrise, we in our monastic cells are in vigils and prayers for the whole world. We're praying for everyone, for the countries, the president, uh, for people, for of course the Orthodox Church. Um, even for our enemies. We're, we're praying for our enemies to be saved. And we're offering our life in martyrdom for the salvation of souls. So a lot of people that probably never knew this, there's so much more to talk about. It's not only our uh, life we give to Christ as a martyr, but as, a, as an Orthodox monk or monastic, but it's also, also um, our spiritual life. We become a spiritual person. We don't go out in the world and work jobs and be a monk at the same time. Does that mean that we're perfect people? Oh, we, we've instantly become perfect. No, as monks, we, we're sinners. We say that we haven't even begun to repent. We, we have to be humble and be in humility, a true humility. We have to fight against and struggle against our passions every day. Somebody once asks a priest monk, which we call a hieromonk. I'm a hieromonk, a priest monk an Archimandrite, spiritual father, Eronda, which means like abbot of the monastery, which I was and still am, even though I don't have the monastery building anymore. I'm in uh, looking for a new location right now. So I've been sort of bugging out in various locations and praying for people. And that's not something we even would say. So I'm not even gonna say that because it's kind of like boasting about, oh, I'm a good person and I pray for you. And so I I'm just, letting you know that that's what we're doing but i shouldn't be saying that um forgive me kitty they song i reject all pride kitty they song um but what we are um, as monastics is 
we are struggling against our passions, our many, many passions, our many, many, our vices, our sinful tendencies, are, um, which all Christians should be doing, all lay people should be doing. But as a monastic, we are uh, set apart in a way that is a mystery. Orthodox monastics, monasticism is a mystery, one of the mysteries of the Orthodox Church. Mystery means we don't know. We're called to this life to become fools for Christ. That's, I think if you become an Orthodox monastic, in every sense of the word, like the Apostle Paul said, <laughs> we, be, we are fools for Christ. The world sees us and we're treated like the garbage of the world. Really. We're on display. We're, we're, we're last. We try to become nothing that we might become something with God in Jesus Christ. So I'll talk more about this later. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christos Christ is risen, truly is risen.